Good morning. Happy Friday. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. An update after yesterday's bombshell motion to compel from Clayton Eckerd's uh, non-paternity case, right? It used to be a paternity case. Now it's a non-paternity. Oh, the tides have turned. It's like when you're watching a football game and there's one team just jamming the ball down the other team's throat. Then after halftime, the other team comes together and realizes that the other team has done this to other men in the past, and it's actually very easy to see what the hell's happening, and then they actually win. That's what's going on now with Clayton Eckerd's side, as he may be the fourth if not more victims in this charade, as it were. And now the evidence of those lies is surfacing as brought to us by some good friends who run the Twitter accounts that are here to provide justice for Clayton, right? You know, initially people were sharing her name like, oh, we need to get her. It's like, no, 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 this is justice for him. And uh, what is dealt with her, the collateral damage from her own actions will be handled in the court of law. My guess is... Um, other than maybe shame to her family's name, there won't be much else that happens uh, other than maybe a, a hefty legal bill she doesn't pay. Follow me on Instagram at dneals. I'm also on pay, on batch, uh, my podcast, Bachelor Rush Hour, every morning and afternoon. we got a great episode for you this weekend. Absolutely loving the uh, bonus interviews we're doing. So if you have any extra time doing lawn work, uh, planting your spring azaleas, whatever the hell you're doing, pop on Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast. And I'll be live at 11.30 a.m. this morning on patreon.com slash slash Dave Neal. All right, let's get into it. So I'm going to share some of those lies. Uh, that's right. She lied or whatever they said. Uh, I don't have the I don't have the uh, thing popped up. Hold on. We're going to get to it. It's Friday. Give me time. She lied. And that was from, of course, uh, Woodnick Law. But here we have the motion to withdraw as attorney of record for petitioner with client consent. This is from Jane Doe's lawyer. Again, I'll get to the emails where Jane Doe clearly lies. Why do we know she lied? Because one thing she said at the deposition didn't line up with things she was saying in emails. Are we surprised? Not exactly. Uh, people are wondering, when are we going to hit bottom? Well, not until we get to the dirt. And it's just like a free fall still. It's still a free fall. Um, I can imagine the video version of the deposition will be wild to watch. I can imagine. And if you are Jane Doe, now you are unrepresented. And boy, you'd hope she would do anything. You think she would do anything to keep that from being revealed. Hey, that's not my problem. That's hers. Petitioner is fully informed of the impending deadlines and has been provided with the February 26 minute entry detailing deadlines. This is Corey Keith saying, hey, I'm leaving the party, but I've given her the keys to success. She's on her own now. Specifically, this matter is scheduled for an evidentiary hearing on June 10th at 8.45 a.m. For two hours, petitioner has been informed of her duty to abide by this court's orders and the possibility of sanctions for noncompliance. Petitioner has ample time to retain new counsel should she choose to do so. There it is, signed by the Desert Legal Group. That's Corey Keith and his new law firm. And, of course, got consent from her. Doesn't want any funny business. We're waiting to see what the, lawyer, what the judge says because the judge can deny his motion to withdraw. Uh, but uh, my guess is the judge won't deny it. There is plenty of time in the case as it has been extended. Um, will Jane Doe get a lawyer or will she use this time to, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, play the victim. No lawyer wants to represent me. My guess is she'll get a no lawyer wants to represent me. Why would she want to pay for a new lawyer who clearly, if she can get a lawyer, is going to want money up front, a retainer, because they, you know, no one's going to trust that a bill is going to be paid after this. So either way, here it is. Uh, now we see pro per. See in the attorney, it says pro per. That means she's on her own. And by the way, I don't want that. I mean, it's interesting that the attorney left. It makes her look bad, but I don't want her to go up against a lawyer. I want a, I want to see the law work itself out with the best professional legal team she can put together because that way when she loses, we'll say, well, clearly she lost. I mean, she had all these great lawyers and it didn't work out, but now she can lose and say, oh my gosh, adios mios, who am I? I couldn't compete against the big bad Mr. Woody. So anyhow, that's where that is. And of course, the comments are, you know, kind of, uh, I would say, reflecting similar thoughts here. I said, little to no attorney present. Uh, everything is still ongoing. The, the, the search for attorneys is ongoing. There isn't no attorney. There's just little to no attorney present. So anyway, here's the emails. 
put together by Clayton's Justice on Twitter, aka X. Given the bombshell that there was a previous paternity case in 2014, let's flash back to these emails from Laura to Clayton from September 2024. Okay, so this is the moment uh, where she flat out lies to Clayton. Before I share that, let's just go to the moment here where she discusses um, a new victim. There is a fourth man who has accused petitioner of fabricating a pregnancy, which supports Clayton's contention that faking pregnancies is either pathological or the oddest of pastimes. Petitioner initiated a paternity action out of California in 2014 regarding what is believed to be her first out of five feigned pregnancies. Um, let's do the math. The first one is 2014. Then we have Mike, Greg, Clayton. Who the hell is the fifth feigned pregnancy? Unless one of these guys, she faked a pregnancy twice. Petitioner was asked to comply with her disclosure of the same. Um, so anyway, that's exhibit four. So let's see if we can go all the way to exhibit four and see what the heck they're talking about here. The fifth guy. So she claims there was no guy. She was like, Clayton, you're the third guy. There is no guy before that. You'll find nothing else before that. Um, she claimed she had an appointment with a telemed provider. She lied when she said there was no other litigation she was involved in. Situations with Jane Doe appear to be paternity matter in San Francisco. Those files are not public, but can be accessed by the parties. Her California attorney did not respond to my email, and neither did you. Of course, because, um, you know, Corey was on his way out. He had his golf gloves on, his golf gloves on, and he was like, um, I think I'm just going to not respond. I think I'm not going to build this anymore. I am happy to ask her to cooperate with the release of records. I trust Jane Doe realizes he will confirm yet another pregnancy con from 2014 that was eerily similar to victim number four at least we believe him to be the fourth clayton all right so they are saying clayton's the fourth so i wonder when they say five fake pregnancies what they mean so anyway we see right here clearly she didn't know whether or not they knew about the san francisco guy because we haven't seen the deposition but she offers that information up they ask like hey is there any previous information we should know about she goes oh yeah i was i was pregnant in 2014 and they're like wait what huh are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I was pregnant. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. He denied that I was actually pregnant, but I was. Yeah, yeah. And so anyway, how bold she is. Now, this is obviously from the deposition, which we haven't seen. This is just Woodnick's uh, recollection of what happened. Uh, in court, you would assume that this will be backed up by the facts because why would they mischaracterize something if then we can be play it in court? Because the deposition can go both ways. They could go, you know, his side can play it and her side can play it if it proves that they're wrong. So we can assume through this motion to compel that, you know, Woodnick Law is not jerking our chain, as it were. Um, so she probably is kicking herself right now that she gave up that information about this guy from 2014 because it's my belief that nobody knew there was an actual court record because the court records in California are only accessible by her or the guy. That's it. Or their lawyers. So uh, unlike in Arizona, so the, the trying to put it this way, when she initially started this con in 2014, she got away with it. Uh, that's the only assumption I can make because she knew no one would see it. Then when she moved this con to Arizona, didn't get away with it. So how can we know about Mike, who is supposed to be victim number two? So Clayton's victim number four now, Greg's three, Mike's two, and then victim one or victim zero, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, I've been saying Andrew. We don't know his name. Andrew might be somebody else. There might be a fifth. All right, that's right. Someone outside the court system. So when we look at this, uh, and guys, please, my mind is melting right now. This is a hard one to process. We go, well, why? Well, if Mike was in California, how come we found out about that one? Because Mike probably shared his information, which isn't illegal. He's allowed to. He's allowed to. She's allowed to, but no one else. So if the first victim, the guy before Mike, doesn't want this information to get out, we're not going to see it. Here's what she said. Clayton, again, September 25th, 2023. This is when Clayton finds out about Greg Gillespie and he's starting to put the pieces together. She said, Clayton, Clayton, Clayton. I was just able to obtain the circulating documents. Of course, that being the witness statements from the other men. And wow, if you believe that is the story, two pages from two cases, 
then you are not as smart as I thought you were. I sent you proof of both pregnancies, which you can see at this Dropbox link. I didn't do this to anyone. I was pregnant twice before. I am 33, and it is proven that I truly was! Exclamation mark. I have never had a paternity case before you in Arizona. So maybe she was just omitting the fact that she had one in California. But um, once a liar, always a liar, right? What's the old term? Um, uh, una, uh, Latin term, once a liar, always a liar. Okay, you understand the quote. Uh, falsus in uno, falsus in omnibus. All right, again, I'm not a lawyer. I am a member of the Professional Society of Journalists. I'm looking for my notepad over there. I threw it out. Um, but either way, you learn a lot here. It's hard when you lie about one thing to be uh, again, a boy who cried a wolf, right? So will there be anything? She could be on fire, and we could be like, are you really? I don't win. We don't know. Is it really? You know, uh, Which is too bad because you want the system to work for you, but God forbid she actually has to call the police because someone robs her. You know, Whatever, some crazy thing could happen in the future. No one's going to believe her, and we want to. We want to believe people, right? I think we all have that intention that we want to believe. So she goes on. Again, these abortions are not related to what is going on with us now, but certainly have shaped how I feel about the current pregnancy. So she she ends up using these past abortions, right? And she says, well, now that you don't believe me, I think I want to keep the child. Like, what? You know what I mean? She starts using the I'll keep the child, which, by the way, is a threat based on the fear that men don't want to have babies. Now, I want to have a baby, but... You don't want to have a baby with someone that you don't want to be stuck with the rest of your life. Her. Uh, no offense to her, but like clearly they're running running for the hills, boys. Come on, you know. Uh, their CrossFit is just running away. Please don't catch up to me. And she's just throwing cease and desist at them, trying to trip them up. Uh, she said, when you search my name in the court, the two family court cases are my restraining orders against the ex from 2021 and 2022. Greg, same person. The other civil case I have is when I sued my contractor for shoddy work on the barn and I won. That's when she sh sued Sean, the Native American who did a lot of work for her and she ended up using some of the, I don't know, my, my guess is he tried his best. She hired a guy who had a new company and I wonder why she ended up going with the, the contractor who had a new company, probably because she knew she could sink him with one bad Yelp review. I also had a case in San Francisco, she says, that I filed from when I was the passenger in an Uber. The driver was texting and we got into a bad crash in a tunnel. That is all you will find on me. Of course, the Uber case was... Um, I guess I guess I've been told, I don't know, I don't know if this is true, but I've been told she gets free Uber for life. Pretty nice, not bad. Former Uber driver here. Uh, wouldn't want to be uh, driving her. She sued the Uber driver. She sued the driver from the other car, and she sued Uber itself. Yikes. A uh, hey Karen in the making. Uh, um, and what else? Oh, so she says, that is all you will find on me. Well, cut to March 1st, the deposition. Turns out we found a lot more on her, but not because of our own digging, but because maybe she's not as smart as we thought she was. You see, I'm doing a play on words here, remember? She said, oh, Clayton, you're not as smart as I thought you were. Now, look, we think, we think Jane Doe is smart. I mean, you know, intelligence can be measured in so many different ways. Um, would I rather be attached to a smart person like her or maybe a guy like Sean, the contractor who is trying his best? I think I'll attach myself to a guy like Sean, a guy like Clayton, guys that are, you know, uh, you know, putting this shit stain of a story behind them, uh, you know, after they finish this lawsuit here. Um, but of course, I mean, you know, for those that are new to the case and haven't seen this from beforehand, we'll just share this one more time. I mean, this is the ultrasound she claims was hers. And then on the right, this is the ultrasound that she made from the one on the left where she added the SMIL, the Southwest Medical Imaging. She added the uh, timestamp September 5th, which by the way, I mean, this is what gets interesting. The timestamp says September 5th, 2023, right? So she claims she lost the babies either in September or October. It's got the, um, you'll see right here, it's got the time code, which doesn't move. As I hit play, watch this, the time code doesn't move, which it should be, the time code should be moving. She added all of this stuff up on the left uh, because it wasn't uh, part of the original file. And then as you see them, 
kind of lined up. You are. Oh, turn this audio off here. As you see them lined up here, I, I added the Mori Povich. That wasn't from her. I added that part. You see that it's, you know, identical. So, you know, she apparently uses this ultrasound, sends it to... And again, this might be a different... She might have multiple fake ultrasounds for all I know, but she sends the ultrasound to, um, I guess, a, a medical provider who then says she's got a boy and a girl, which it's like, how the hell could you tell from ultrasounds like this? Again, no evidence of that. Uh, that's just like, that's hearsay from her. So yeah, there's your evidence of lies. Others have asked, as we continue the conversation, what's going to go down with mom? What's going to go down with sister? As she now claims in the deposition, she sent the photographic evidence, which again, would be very important. Her case is contingent on sewing on somebody having the records of the evidence of the photos she took. Because if she has actual photographic proof of her miscarriages, it changes the story completely. And then you say, well, and again, don't get me wrong, there's still more to why she found that out in November and didn't tell anybody. You know, of course, it, you know, but it definitely changes the story. Now, we know those photos don't exist, but in order to show that those photos don't exist, wouldn't you think it would be appropriate to depose Jane Doe's mom and Jane Doe's sister, the two people she says she sent those photos to? Even if they don't have proof of the photos, let's get them under oath explaining whether they recollect that or not. My guess is if they're being truthful, they don't. My guess is the mom recollects it, but the sister doesn't. Because so far, the sister's silence is deafening and I can understand that she doesn't want to be a part of this case. We'll be live at 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time on Patreon if you want to talk more. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. We'll see you then.